Hello fellow readers, welcome to the channel where I, your literary butler, bring you literature on a plate. And today's plate is Chinua Zacheves, a man of the people. Chinua Achebe was one of Nelson Mandela's favorite writers. This book was written in 1966, and it's a reflection on a fragile African democracy post-decolonization. Listen to this description on page 33. We had been in the rain together until yesterday, then a handful of us, the smart and the lucky, and hardly ever the best, had scrambled for the one shelter our former rulers left, and had taken it over and barricaded themselves in. So, we have two interesting characters in the book. The first one is Chief Nanga. Chief Nanga was once a school teacher, a school teacher, but he rose through the ranks of a political party and became a very influential and charming politician, yet a dirty one. He takes bribes, he embezzles public money, he increases his estate at the expense of public treasury. One day, Chief Nanga visits the school where he once taught, and he is reunited with Odili, another of the main characters of the book. Odili was a former pupil of Chief Nanga and has now become a school teacher himself. So, Chief Nanga invites Odili over to his house to discuss his future. Um, but then the two soon conflict over a girl. Chief Nanga is a bit of a ladies' man and he makes it pass at Odili's girlfriend. A gulf is then created between the two of them. And out of spite, Odili joins a new political party and tries to dispute the political seat of Chief Nanga. A very hard political campaign then follows with a lot of blows below the belt. Listen to this description on page 99. In fact, there was already enough filth clinging to his name to disqualify him most of his colleagues as well, but we are not as strict as some countries. To me, this is the main focal point of the book. The flaws of democracy are not very different from the flaws of society. We usually become extremely disappointed with our representatives because they publicly display our own failures. But the only way to improve the quality of democracy is to watch over it. Every actively informed and actively engaged citizen must act as a watchdog of democracy. If I was a dirty politician, I would fear an actively engaged citizen rather than an indifferent one. For instance, I live in a country where, on average, elections have only 50% turnout. So, if democracy was a damsel in distress, only 50% of my fellow countrymen would show up to save it. To the other 50%, it's probably indifferent if they live in a democracy or a dictatorship, seem, since they seem to have no relevant opinion to share, since they seem to be activists of no cause. But the worst thing about this sort of attitude is that it is extremely contagious. You switch the channel every time boring politics is on, and then a new generation grows up into voting age without probably even knowing the difference between left and right. So, flawed as it may be, a functioning democracy, to me, is one of the reasons why we tend to have rather peaceful and tolerant societies. Because when democracies are a sham, your diverging opin opinion usually has to debate a police truncheon. So, when you become involved in a higher cause, you become transfigured. And such is also the case for Odili. Odili was once a sort of shallow, uh, vain, and purely academic individual. But by disputing that hard campaign, he becomes transfigured. Listen to this description on page 120. 
What I had to accomplish became more than another squabble for political office. It rose suddenly to the heights of symbolic action, a shining, monumental gesture, untainted by hopes of success or reward. It's a very interesting book. It has to me one of the most brutal closing sentences you will ever find in a book. Uh, you'll probably have to wrestle through the meaning of some parts of the book because it uses pidgin English, which is a sort of Creole English. But it's very funny to try and uh, determine the exact meaning of the words and it gives it all the more authenticity. So that's a wrap. Hope you can, folks, enjoy. Hope to see you again for a next review. And until then, please read on. A reader is a sort of scientist. He's always placing the human soul under a microscope. See ya.